Hello and welcome back to our quest series Redo and in this episode we're going to carry on where we left off last time and work on our quest log component. In the quest log component will be setting up things such as the tracking of what quests we're currently on and what ones we've completed already. So let's get started. So the whole crux of this is that we're going to store information about what quests we're currently on, which ones we've got completed, and so on and so forth, on a quest log component that we can attach to our player character. So I'm going to go into my quest uh, system folder here, and we create a new blueprint class, and that'll be an actor component. And we'll call this one the quest log component. And we're going to open our quest log component up. And in here, we're going to set up some basic uh, functionality and variables. So let's go to, first of all to the variables here. And the first thing we're going to do is going to be current active quests. So these are going to be a, an array of all the quests that we currently have available to our character right now that we're currently doing. So current active quests will be a name array. Then we're going to have another variable, which will be the ones that we completed. So completed quests. We're also a name array, and that's so we don't accidentally pick up some quests that we already have, and so on and so forth. We also want to keep track of a particular quest. So we're going to have another variable for current tracked quest. But rather than being an array, this will be just one singular quest here. If you want to track multiple quests, you could probably totally do that too. If you want to do an array, that's totally an option, but we're just going to do one single tracked quest. Uh, we're also going to keep track of our quest log, um, our current, sorry, our current quest we have on our person. So, current quests are going to be the actual quest actors that we made in the last episode, uh, stored and referred to in here inside of an array. So we're going to change that to here our quest base. It's be an object reference as an array. Okay. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to create some functions here. So I'm going to add one here for add new quest. And the purpose of this one is to obviously add a quest to our quest log. So we're going to have in here one input. And that's going to be a name and be the quest ID. And on add new quest, it's going to be a pretty simple one. You're going to take in your active quests. And we're going to do add unique. We're doing add unique because we don't want to add duplicates of the quest ID by accident. So this will just make sure we don't have that happening. And we're going to click that up to there. We then want to spawn in the quest base class itself. And in that quest base needs to know what quest actually is. So we're going to go into our quest base. Go to its quest ID variable that we added last time. I'm going to take instance editable and expose on spawn. Compile and save that. We're then go back to our quest log component and we're going to do spawn actor from class. And we're going to choose from here our quest base class. And as you can see, it's going to ask us for our quest ID. If you don't see this, it just means you haven't ticked that expose on spawn tick box on our quest base. So that will be the same as this quest ID. Just plug that in like that. And the transform doesn't matter. If it's invisible, it really doesn't matter. You can just split that open and it'll work as such. Okay, and once we've spawned this in, we want to add it to our current quests array. So drag this out, get the quests, and then do add. There we go. So we're spawning in the quest, we're keeping track of its name, and we're keeping track of the actual quest actor itself. Next, we're going to do complete quest. So let's go into here and add another one, another function called complete quest. And the purpose of complete quest is that we'll hand it in and get the rewards. We'll come back to it later when we've actually got that in there. We want to query the active quest we have. So we're going to know do we actually have this quest already? So query active quest. And this is going to ask for a simple quest ID. So let's do that. Quest ID. And we're going to simply just return whether or not this ID exists inside this array. So to do that, you just drag out the array that you have and you just type in the word contains item. 
and you plug in your quest ID like so. And all we have to do is just do a return value. Return node like that. And we'll plug that in and plug the Boolean here into our return node to add it here as a return value. Now, make this even nicer. I'm going to make this function also a pure function. Because I'm not doing anything like setting or changing any details at all. I'm just reading information. We can use a pure note, uh, call here. Which basically just means that I can then drag this out and it'd be the sort of green shape one rather than a blue shaped one. So now I don't have to give it an execute path. I can just call it and get information as I have it in real time. And the beauty of that is because our quest active current active quest could be being manipulated at any point in time, this will get it as it is right there and then as soon as possible. Okay. Okay, next we've got uh, another function, and this one will be track quest. And that'll do for now. We'll come back to here a bit later on when we're obviously filling these out and adding more functions as we know that we'll need. But for right now, we just need to do add new quest and uh, query to put it into our quest log. So to be able to do that, we need a quest giver. So quest givers are going to be a, another component that we're going to give to other objects and characters. So let's close this and go back to our content draw and create another blueprint class. This time it'll be another actor component. And this will be a quest giver. So quest log is the one that's going to be receiving quests and keep track of them. The quest giver is actually going to be the one dealing out the quest. So quest giver component, like that. And this one's relatively simple. All you're going to have on here is a, a variable, which would be the quest details you want it to have. So you do quest uh, data. And the type for this would be a data table row handle. And what that means is that I can compile this. If I go down to quest details here, I can give it the quest data table. I can choose the quest then from the drop down as I so wish. Okay, so makes it a bit easier to pick it. Uh, we also need some functions on here. Um, we'll need a function to display the quest to the player so they can choose to accept it or not. Okay, and so that'll do there for now. We hit compile and save that and close that there. And we need to set up the interaction system to allow our characters to interact with quest givers, objects, things like that. Um, so we can actually use it. So we're gonna create a interact system. Now for that, this interact system would probably be existing across multiple things inside your game, not just for quests. So it doesn't make sense to put in a quest system folder. I'm gonna put it into the root here. Um, we're gonna create a blueprint class and, no, sorry, blueprint class, blueprints interface. And we'll do I interaction interface. And in there, we're going to have the interact with. And also another function for look at. I'll save that. Alongside this, we're going to set up some common function library as well. So let's go into our blueprints, go to function library. And we call this one the common function library. Oh, that was spell it correctly. There we go. And the point of this is I want to make some functions I want to make in here are going to be ones that I'm using all the time. Um, so I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Let's keep it quite simple. So let's just put that in here as uh, as we want. So this first one is going to be get my player character. And in here, we do get player character. And from there, cast to, this is the first person template. So we go first person character. And I'm gonna output this reference here. So do return node. And output that blue pin there. And we call this one my player character. Okay, and I'll make this a pure function again. And this then allows me to go to any other blueprint. So for example, if I go into my quest giver component here, I can just search for get my player character. And there you go, I can get access to directly the player character of my choosing. So really useful to have something like that. 
Uh, we're doing other things in here too for game mode. So let's do one for game mode. So get my game mode. Get game mode. And then cast to uh, the first person game mode. And then return node. This pin here. And we'll do my game mode. Make it pure. Hit compile, save. So now we can call that whenever we like to. Okay. And a bit more we'll add to this down the line as well. So don't worry about that too much. So we're going to go back to our quest giver component here. And what I'm doing with my quest giver component is I'm going to actually give this itself the interaction interface. So if I go to the class settings and go over to interfaces on the right here, go to add and search for interaction interface. And you'll see here now on the left hand side, we've got look at and interact with coming through with different um, functions now on the left, left hand side. Now thinking ahead, our interaction is going to need another output. Now the interaction uh, needs an output because we can have this objective ID system. So as I mentioned in the last episode, objective IDs will be assigned to various items, enemies and so forth. And when you collect or interact with something, it's going to basically shout out that objective ID. If any quest has been told to listen up for it, it will respond in kind. So our interaction here needs to know which ID it just interacted with. So let's go back to our, our interface here. And in here, I'm going to go to interact with and go to outputs. I'm going to have the um, interaction ID. And this will be a string. Actually, I'll keep it simple. We'll call this objective ID. There you go. So it's going to shout out this objective ID at the end once we get around to it. So hit compile and that's there now. But what that does, it changes it over on the game uh, quest giver here when I compile. This interact with now is gray, which indicates that this is a function. So if I double click on it, we'll get this node come up like so. Okay, so in, when I interact with the quest giver component, I want it to reward me with the quest, by, uh, and or at least display the quest anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do get my player character. I'm going to get the quest log for my character. Now I don't have it on my character just yet, so let's go on add it. So let's go to first person blueprints, first person character. Add quest log. Uh, need some space. There we go. A quest log component. I'm going to go back to my quest giver. So from this reference now, I should, I should be able to get that quest log. Get quest log component. And now I can call the query active quest because I want to see whether or not I actually have this quest already in my quest log and I'm currently doing it. Now with this. In here, I just need a quest ID, which we're going to get from our data table row handle. So drag this out, choose get, and then split it open to reveal the row name itself. You can plug it in like so. We want it to only do this if we are not currently on it. So we're going to do a not boolean on here. And that will go into a branch. And plug that in there. And if it's true, that means I'm not already on it. And so therefore I can call display quest. So bring out display quest, put it on true, and then put the return node in there. And then on false here, I'm just going to do a print string for now, but later on, this will be swapped out for an actual widget. The print string saying already on quest. And again, a return node will come out of there. Now, as for the objective ID, what I tend to do is I would put in the actual name of the thing that I'm interacting with. So, for example, I'd get the owner of this component. So if this belonged to an NPC, I want to report back the NPC I just spoke to. So get owner, get display name. And that will now get that into objective IDs here and here. Compile and save that. So now this is a component. We can now attach this to any actor, any NPC we like to reward them a quest to then give to the player. So there you go. And there we have it. We've now got our quest log component set up and ready for use. 
in the next episode we're going to go look at the second half of this which is the quest giver component this will indicate which quests are available on which ai or which objects inside the world allowing you to pick up quests from anywhere you want so if you want to watch the next episode right now head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where you'll find all my videos early before everyone else from just one dollar a month thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and i'll see you next time bye everyone